All right, so I decided uh, I wasn't having good luck prototyping with this part because the lead spacing was all kind of strange and everything was kind of getting bunched up and it was important that all the lead length be kind of short and stuff on it. And so I decided to lay out a little PC board. They're so, so cheap these days. Yeah, I uh, When I ordered them, that was $2 to get five boards and then shipping. Uh, I think the entire order was something like $12, maybe $10. Anyway, somewhere, somewhere around, right around $10. Um, so yeah, pretty crazy. Anyway, so, uh, here we have a, uh, input connector. I have it set up to, to have a non-inverting, I mean, an inverting amplifier or non-inverting. I guess you can set it. No, it's really set up for inverting amplifier. Um, R3 is just going to be uh, zero ohms. And then I have a 10K, 10K to have a gain of one, or I could put in a gain of 10 or have switchable R4s. I don't know. I'm going to try it out. I have a little pull down, 100K um, pull down, just to make sure the thing settles at zero if there's no inputs to it. I've added this number circuit. Uh, I've I've got those in, in the garage. I've got 18 ohms. So I'm putting putting two in parallel and then the 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Um, I have the limiter resistor laid out in there. I'm probably going to put a zero ohm there too, though. I have a couple tantalums that are close by and then some big ones. Um, and then I have this little circuit down here at the bottom. That's just to, to, to light up an LED on the front panel to know that power's been applied or not. I just added that. All right, let's take a look at the other one. Okay, here's the layout. Um, so I was able to go to Texas Instrument and get a, a uh, Eagle CAD um, package for the OPA 549. That's where I got the schematic symbol, but their um, pad symbol was terrible. So I've I've edited it and I put in a staggered staggered pin array. Um, and I think that'll that'll work out really good. So you can see that I have four big capacitors, so two, two capacitors. I think I've got some 2,200 microfarad capacitors. So I'm going to have 4,400 on each uh, rail, um, minus minus voltage at the top, and then plus voltage at the ground at the bottom, and then ground in the middle, and then the output up at the top there and everything. So it's very 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 simple little board. So I think this will uh, this will work out really good. Waiting for them in the mail. All right, it's been eight days, and I now have PC boards in my hand. I can't believe it. Eight days. Um, I paid two dollars to get five boards, and I paid. It was eleven dollars and eighty cents, so nine dollars and eighty cents shipping. Um, so yeah, less than twelve dollars. Eight days later, I've got PC boards in my hand, and they're beautiful. <laughs> I can't believe it. Anyway. Um, there's a couple errors on the board, not that I have them in my hand, if I was going to spin them again, which I'm not. Um, all the stuff that I was worried about was it ended up ended up great. The, the errors that I found were, there's a missing trace on the back, uh, right, right here, there's supposed to be a trace right there, and that's, that's missing. But that's an output that I probably aren't going to use, so... It doesn't really matter. It just goes to a pad. It doesn't goes, go anywhere else, so it doesn't really matter. It's missing either. Um, I mean, not too much. Um, the other error that I found was the um, resistors. I was trying to find the correct package for these resistors, and I thought I had, and I should have double checked the hole size because these holes are really tiny. I need big holes for the for the for the big fat one watt resistors. But anyway, uh, I drilled them out and uh, fudged it. So uh, this is what it looks like. So yeah, it looks very professional. Um, so I have the two resistors up here. Like I said, I had to drill them out and then uh, kind of bodge them a bit. Since the, there's no through hole uh, plating anymore, I just took the wires and and soldered them to the pads that were associated. So, but that turned out okay. Uh, and the uh, layout of the of the part turns out good. All the capacitors fit fine. There's an output for LED. It just takes 24 volts and sends it out to an LED. And then, um, so I'm going to have big fat wire in my unit. So the big fat wire here's where the the plus 
V goes, and here's where the minus V goes, and here's where ground goes, so there's one, two, three, and then the output is this big pad here and ground. So I've got two big ground holes, and uh, there you go. Like I said, this one is the output for pin nine, which is, are you uh, over voltage? No, over, over current? Over current, over temp, I think gives a, a signal here. And it's also a shutdown pin. If you ground this, it shuts down the part, so I might wire that up. And uh, yeah, the other pads are down here, a little hard to see. There's two pads here that are uh, the input signal, right? So you hook the function generator or whatever up to these two pins. So one of them's ground and the other one is the signal. And that's it, very simple board. Uh, I'm glad I built it. It's gonna look very nice. It's gonna, it's gonna fit good in the box, I think. Uh, I, I laid it out such that the uh, tab hangs way over. So uh, if, I, if, this were the, if this were the heat sink, then I could, uh, I could just attach it there and the board hangs over. So it should be good, good thermal contact. And uh, yeah, there you go. So next step is to uh, get it in the board. I thought I'd give you a couple close-ups. Bodge in the back. And here's what the bare boards look like. People might ask, I hey, my board's from uh, uh, JLC PCB, uh, not a sponsor. Um, yeah, turned out good. Uh, 1.6 millimeter board.